Welcome to the Eduonix course, Building Responsive Websites. In this intro video for Part A, I'll briefly go over what you'll learn and what you'll be doing through the course of this series. First, we'll discuss what responsive web design is and what it consists of. A quick definition would be an approach to designing websites and applications that offer easy browsing and navigation on a wide range of devices. So basically, a responsive website should look no, maybe not the same, but should look as good on any device, any screen size, or any platform. We'll also discuss the main components and strategies of responsive web design, and that's fluid and flexible layouts, flexible images, and CSS3 media queries. In section 3, I'll go over some of the many tools that we can use to help aid in the building of responsive websites and these tools could include text editors, design tools, frameworks, device emulators, code verification, documentation, and testing applications. In part A we'll be building a website slash framework called RISP project and what I mean by a framework is something that you can use to create new responsive websites and you can see an example here we have the main desktop view and then we have the uh, mobile device view. Next we'll talk about HTML5 structure and style. We'll create the base HTML that we need, the HTML5 standards. We'll be using new HTML5 tag syntax such as header, footer, section, and we'll also create and link the style sheet. Next we'll create a fluid layout which means we'll add the CSS styles for fluid width we'll use percentages instead of fixed widths. We'll, we'll create our CSS rules for all screens. That's the main CSS styling, things such as colors and, and the width and height of main elements. Then we'll create our media query which will allow us to create CSS rules for mobile screens. We can have separate layouts for smartphones, tablets, laptops, and desktops. We'll also do some testing. Finally we'll do get some CSS transitions which will allow us to go from one layout to another in a smooth way rather than just popping in and out of layouts. So that's the gist of part A. In part B we'll, go, we'll be dealing with Twitter bootstrap and responsiveness using that framework. 